New shoes, new outfit, nigga. Bad. Get money all day. Y'all bad, wish y'all had a bad, bad like me, don't you? It's a hobby. You can work at Kinko's. Promise you couldn't copy. My world, Bobby. But this is no cartoon. Pull up on you in traffic. Turn your whip to a carpool. I got it bad. Me got it by the trash bag. And glass jars. If you talking about the loud. We started rapping in about 2000. I mean, I always just kind of, you know, freestyled around, you know, the older OGs in my neighborhood. And I was, you know, entertainment for them. So, you know, when I first started off, I took a little bit of my street money and bought me some equipment, take me in, and, you know, started trying to put my own CDs and things in the streets. Then from there, you know, I just upgraded and started going to studios and started putting out my own music, getting a response from my own neighborhood that I came up in, started hitting the clubs. The club owners see me coming in, spending money at the bar, and, you know, they started playing my songs in the club, and that's pretty much, you know, the legend of trap stuff. Well, I hooked up with Stupid Dope Moves last year, last summer, actually. Um, I hollered at Charlemagne on the internet, and I actually had a relationship with him, with somebody that was a partner of mine, you know, was getting records played, you know, dealing with Frosty and them going down to Columbia, we beat them at club, so I reminded him of that relationship. And then, you know, he told me to email him some music, so I sent him three songs, and, you know, he gave me a call. We set up a meeting, I drove down to Columbia, you know, I met him at Ruby Tuesday, you know, we shook hands, and you know, we've been rocking ever since. You know, we did the first mixtape in tune with my star player, we, you know, got a whole lot of exposure with that mixtape, because they had the SC to Texas featuring Paul Wall. So then we went in with Chuck T and then we behind, we were still, you know, making his rounds, you know, on the internet, we had this beautiful beats mixtape with DJ Frosty. So all we've been doing is, you know, just rocking up, just putting out mixtapes, just creating the buzz it takes because everybody knows it takes a second to get into this game because you want to be in the state, not just. Well, coming from the upstate, first of all, we don't really have the formatted type of radio station where we can get independent spins, even if it's one or two during the month or during the week. We don't get any of that. It's just straight format, pop radio, top 40. So really the records in the upstate have to deal from the open mics. We had three to four open mics at one time, but you know, violence, people that don't support, instead of coming, you know, just to rap and bring fans with them, they come by themselves, so the open mics don't really last long because you don't have any fans. You just got a building full of rappers and that's not going to pay the bills. So coming from the upstate, I had to realize you got to go to Columbia. Like, yeah, if they playing the local records down there, it makes all the sense in the world to take yours down there and try to get them up there too. So just coming from the upstate, it's just a little bit harder of a grind because we don't have the network. A lot of the DJs aren't ready to take that risk yet. As far as on independent artists, you know, around that area. So my best advice to anybody from the upstate is, you know, to get mobile with it because the more you move, the more people that you access yourself to who know somebody who can potentially help you. Um, NC to Texas, we actually had met Paul Wall at the beat. They did their birthday bash that summer. So we had met Paul and chopped it up. You know, him and Charlamagne had a small relationship. And Paul was really just a real artist. He, you know, he was never Hollywood with it from the situation. He just wanted to do some music. And, you know, that's where we all started from anyway before we had any kind of notoriety. It was just the love of music. So I actually had the record at NC to Texas. And I had my uh, kid folk on that show, 713. He was on there, and, you know, for him to actually allow me to put Paul Wall on the record and not, you know, try to make no diss records or feel a certain way towards me, I think that's real, because he allowed me to take him off the record and put Paul Wall on the record, I just felt like it was all God connecting all the dots, because as soon as Paul Wall was like, let's work, I'm like, okay, I got a song right now. Bye. Now, if you remember, when we had sheblogging.com a little early, we kind of had everybody in the rut when we put out that article talking about the artists and the DJs. So my opinion at this point is, we've really been kind of going at it ass backwards as artists, in my opinion, because you got to take the record to the streets first. Because if we do our job and we make sure at least 500 to 1,000 people in the streets actually like the record, when you throw that record on, they're going to stand up for us inside the club. All the DJ really is chasing is the attention of the people. He wants them to dance. So when you play a new record in the club, of course, if you and your entourage are the only people that have heard it, y'all going to be the only one that can move to it. Because the human ear is just naturally going to stop. Let me uh, process what I'm hearing. And if I like it, then I'm going to dance. So if we already done took it to the streets, as soon as the DJ throw the record on, oh, that's my 
Yeah. 